Are you a homeowner that's thinking about requesting a forbearance on your mortgage and totally confused about how this is really going to affect you in the long run? Well, today we're talking about the portion of the CARES Act that focuses on mortgage forbearance and exactly how this works to give you the real facts. Today, I have a special guest. Joe Mata, a loan officer with Fairway Mortgage, is here with us today to take the confusion out of the forbearance process and hopefully give homeowners new hope that there are alternatives. So let's get started. Welcome, Joe. First, we need to say that you are a loan officer and not a loan servicer. Hi, Lisa. Yeah, good morning. I'm currently a loan officer and I've been in a business since 2004, which means I've been through the Great Recession and I have a unique perspective on what's going on with these forbearance plans that we're going to talk about. Uh, during that time, the owner of the mortgage company I work for uh, decided to open up another company uh, that was specifically created to help homeowners at the time talk to their loss mitigation departments and help them stay out of foreclosure and into their homes. So at that time, similar to today, forbearance plans are the first step in getting help during a financial crisis. Okay. What okay. exactly is a forbearance plan? So a forbearance plan is a reduced um, or suspended monthly payments, and it could be done from 90 to 180 days, and it could be extended after the 180 days. But it's super important to clarify that a forbearance plan is not payment forgiveness, and we're going to tell you why that's important. And who is going to be eligible for these forbearance plans? Well, that's a scary part. Um, anyone who verbally states that they're currently in a hardship due to COVID-19 can get into forbearance plan. But very few people know the long-term ramifications of getting into these plans. I think you hit the nail on the head. The public is confused due to all the media reports. I am so glad you're here today so we can give them the true facts. Okay, so the initial forbearance period is up. So what is the service you're going to offer their customer at that point? Well, the second step um, in this guide that we're going to be sharing is called a reinstatement. This is where the servicer will ask the borrower to pay all the past delinquent amounts and to make the loan current. Sure. So the second step is called reinstatement. This is where the loan servicer will ask the loan servicer will ask the borrower if they are able to pay back all the past delinquent amounts and bring the loan current. The first question that pops in my mind, if the homeowner could not pay the regular monthly payment, how are they going to be able to afford all these past due payments at once? Well, that's a good question. So if the borrower isn't able to reinstate the amount that's past due, we'll have to take them to step three, which is the repayment plan. To be clear, this is when the forbearance period has ended and they're back to work, correct? Yes, yeah, so it's important to state that anytime during your forbearance plan, you can pay back the past due amount to get the loan current. Now, the repayment plan can last for up to 12 months. This is where your loan servicer will ask you to pay a regular, your regular mortgage payment in addition to the past due amounts, and they're going to spread them out over the time period that your servicer and you agreed to. Okay, what happens if they can't make the new monthly payment offered in the repayment plan? Well, in that case, it's going to take us to step four, which they may be offered a lump sum payoff. So the borrower hardship has ended, meaning they're back to work and they're able to make their regular monthly mortgage payments, but they're unable to make the new payment being offered in the repayment plan. So depending on the loan that they have, they might be offered two options. We're going to focus on two of the main loans that most everyone has, which is a conventional and an FHA. If you don't happen to have either one of these loans, you could just reach out to your loan servicer and see what options you have available. So for the conventional loan, which is usually um, owned by Fannie, or, uh, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, you might be offered a payment deferral. Well, this is when they're gonna take two payments and it's limited to only two payments of the past two amounts. And they're gonna put it to the back of the loan per se, and they'll need to be paid off or that amount will need to be paid off if you ever refinance or sell your home. If you have an FHA loan, which is backed by HUD, uh, you might be offered what's called a partial claim. And that means that they will take up to 12 of the payments and attach it to your loan to be paid again when you refinance or sell the home. That turns into a separate mortgage note that's attached to your original mortgage. So how does the CARES Act protect homeowners credit while they're going through this repayment plan? Okay, If they were current on their mortgage prior to the COVID emergency, 
the loan servicer will continue to report the mortgage as current, even if they're in a forbearance plan. So what happens if the homeowner is not able to catch up on their mortgage after trying all these options? Well, then that takes us to step five, which is a loan modification. So this is where the homeowner's original mortgage terms and monthly payment might be modified to allow them to get a, a lower monthly payment and allow them to stay in their home. But it's important to note that they'll need to be back to work and they still need to qualify and that the qualifying guidelines are much tighter for a loan modification. Thank you for helping us make sense of this confusing forbearance process. It is super important to realize that forbearance does not mean forgiveness. Joe, what is the most important piece of advice you can leave our viewers today when a homeowner is thinking about getting into a forbearance? Well, Lisa, I would say that if you choose to get into a forbearance plan, go into this with your eyes wide open so that you know what you're getting into. Communicate with your loan servicer immediately and often. Also make sure that you have written proof that you are actually in a forbearance plan. The whole idea with these plans is for you to stay in your home and get your mortgage payments caught up. Joe, again, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. For anyone wanting to contact Joe directly, you'll find all of his information in this post or in the description. I'm here every Monday with a new video to help you make smart decisions when buying or selling a house. Until then, stay safe, my friends, and I'll see you on the next one.